The Laura Ingram Show. This administration has consistently and steadfastly placed the goal of amnesty above the goal of public safety. Time and time and time again, that's been the fact. If this administration has spent one-tenth of the effort on uh, enforcement and protecting people from crimes, we'd be a lot safer today. That's just fact, and everybody knows it. Oh, no, no, no. This is... <laughs> oh, boy. Well, we're going to really see a border rush now. Of thousands of people like, perched on the border. Oh, no, it's Sessions. <laughs> Crossing. So throwing on the swim swimsuits, trying to swim across the Rio Grande. Well, Jeff Sessions ahead of the curve on the perils of dangling amnesty, which created a new border crush. The perils for our criminal justice system, our budget, the drug invasion into the United States. The cartels, the human trafficking angle. Jeff Sessions has been preaching the gospel of American sovereignty, independence, and the rule of law for decades. Extreme is trying to pass an immigration bill that would double the flow of guest workers into our country and triple the grants of permanent admissions to America when 50 million working-age Americans are out of work. We have a very serious unemployment problem. There's not, there's no one con concerned about that? No, oh, no, no one was concerned about it until, frankly, Donald Trump came along and gave voice to these concerns on a national level. Uh, Sessions was trying to do everything he could from the Senate floor. And there were many nights where he would be speaking and no one would be there. But he would just be speaking to the, you know, C-SPAN would be covering it. But he was oftentimes just there by himself. And I look back, Drew, and remember the Huntsville, it was a Huntsville, Alabama, or no, Mobile, Alabama, the 20,000. Oh, yeah, the Mobile, hey, 30,000. 30, 30, okay, 30, go back, go back, James, and get that uh, uh, Alabama speech from August of 2015. When, uh, when, Se Mobile, yeah, yeah Sessions session showed up with Trump. This was at the beginning of right, the Trump he hadn't phenomenon. He quite endorsed him yet. He had, no, no, that, no. He had the hat on, though. Yeah, he, he put the, the hat, hat on, on, but he didn't endorse him. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, uh, Trump was, and we have Senator we Sessions have, yeah, here. Yeah, Senator Sessions. It was awesome. It was great. Yeah, no, but Sessions in August of 2015. Saw it coming. Saw this coming. He said, ah, 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 this is, he's finally saying what needs to be said with the stature of someone like Trump, with the brand of someone like Trump, and he's just unabashed in doing it. He will just come out and say what has to be said. And sometimes it's a little rough around the edges. As we know, it was a little rough. But Sessions saw it. So Sessions was going to get everything, anything he wanted. I mean, Sessions wanted to be defense. He's going to get defense. If Sessions wanted to be state, he would have gotten state. But it makes perfect sense for him to be at the Justice Department. And remember, he was a former attorney general of Alabama. Okay, he was also on the Judiciary Committee, and he was U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of Alabama. So on the federal level, that's what he was doing. Uh, and, of course, is my phone ringing? People are calling me. I'm going to answer it. Hold on. I'm on the air, but I'll call you back. Bye. Okay. Sorry. I just had to do that. <laughs> um, sometimes I forget to turn my phone down, and it's really embarrassing. But this is my life. What can I say? Uh, so he has that experience. No, he he has the experience. He has the, uh, I think, the confirmed conservative bona fides on immigration and trade, which are the two issues that Trump ran on beyond anything else, immigration and trade. And from the the outrages with the with the cartels bringing these drugs across the border to the human trafficking issue we have to the crimes being committed uh, by illegal immigrants, a new one we just brought you a couple of days ago, a horrific story about an illegal immigrant uh, raping this woman and leaving her in a ditch. This is horrific stuff. And he's he has been He's been publicizing this when no one wanted to talk about it. And you bet he should be attorney general because guess what? He's going to be enforcing the laws across the board. doesn't matter who you are, where you came from. If you're legally in the United States it, you're, you're, or you're an American citizen, the law applies to you. The American people, these people, want somebody in the presidency who stands up for them. 
defends their interests and the laws and traditions of this country. Uh, we welcome you here. Thank you for the work you put into the immigration issue. I'm really impressed with your plan. I know it will make a difference. And this crowd shows a lot of people agree with that. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome and God bless. Do you remember when that crowd uh, was um, filling into that? Was it a, it was a stadium or what was it? What was yeah, it? Yeah, it was a local. Um, it was local football stadium. Yeah, but it was massive. And when we were talking about it at the time, I remember hearing. Other commentators say, oh, well, this is Alabama. They were looking right. down on Alabama. Remember, they're saying, oh, it's what do you expect? There's nothing else to do in Alabama. A lot of people from Florida that are nearby. All oh, right, know? that's Mobile, close, yeah. close by. So, well, but it's just Alabama. Yes, yeah, some panhandlers came right. to that. Um, and they were just, they were ridiculing that moment. doesn't matter, though. When 30,000 people show up, it doesn't matter where you are. I mean, okay, <laughs> do you remember how hot it was? This was right. August of yes. 2015. It was hot in D.C., let alone it Alabama. It was brutal. Yet the people lined up. It reminded me of Leesburg, Virginia, Sunday before the election, cold and dark and thousands upon thousands of people streaming through the woods to get to the Leesburg fairgrounds to see Trump in the last 48 hours of the campaign. It reminds me of that. It was just there was a movement of people toward an idea that America has to get better and we have to focus on the home front, making it safe, making it prosperous, common sense policies. Get rid of political correctness. Forget the, you know, the media bias. Cut right through it. Use, you know, try to use these new media outlets to get the message across and talk frankly to the American people. I mean, that's that's where it all started. Really, you, you go back to Trump Tower, you skip forward to Alabama. That's where the the really I think the first sign of this movement really manifest itself was in that uh, mobile event. And Jeff Sessions was there. How smart is he to be there? All these other people, oh, no, I can't appear with Trump. They were saying that in April. They wouldn't appear with Trump. They wouldn't endorse Trump until August of this year. And meanwhile, he's there in August of last year. He's so far ahead of the curve. So I could not be uh, happier. Maybe we'll just play session speeches for the next three hours on the show. I know you'll love me if I do that. Other uh, announcements, General Michael Flynn, that's going to drive the left crazy, too. They despise Flynn. National Security Advisor. Retired Army Lieutenant General, former director of the Defense Intelligence Agency. He was uh, pushed out, uh, and, and at, at the time it was pushed out because they said his management style was too gruff. I'm like, well, I don't think I'd make it then. <laughs> My management style is too gruff. He doesn't suffer fools. Well, okay. Guilty. But he's he's really, he's a great, great man, great patriot, and I think he'll do a terrific job. Uh, Representative Mike Pompeo. CIA director, he's been on this show many times, represented uh, Kansas' uh, 4th Congressional District since 2011. He's on the Energy Commerce Committee, and he uh, he worked a lot with Senator Cotton on these secret side agreements they believed uh, uh, had been crafted between Iran and the IAEA on the inspection and verification of Iran's nuclear uh, capacity. And so these these are good guys. These are all good people. I can't wait. But they're already going crazy about Sessions. Have you seen that? Yeah, he's on the House Intel and Benghazi committees too. Um, they're going crazy about Sessions already. They're, I mean, they, we've known Jeff Sessions for how many years? This is these are his issues. Oh, the left go on like Think Progress or Media Matters. Like just, they're gonna their heads gonna blow off their shoulders. They're so upset about. Oh, I Sessions. heard someone talking about you know he was down in Alabama when the segregation was going on. Well, he's an older gentleman and well, he is from so Alabama, but yeah. doesn't mean he had any part of it. Yeah, well, when segregation. So he was actually there. It's yeah. like saying <laughs> you were in New York on 9/11, and so you had to be involved. And I will say this came from Fox too. Oh really? Well, well yeah. I'm telling you, there. Well, the real question is, what does David Gergen say all, about all this? Can we play the David Gergen from yesterday? Okay, we did because a lot of you. We played this later in the show uh, yesterday, and and I'm not. I'm, I promise you, I'm just playing this for humor purposes. I have nothing to say about the press secretary thing. People keep asking me. I have nothing new to say about. It. Nothing new for you on that. But it is hilarious to listen to the commentators who are talking about. Well, if someone's being uh, extremely controversial. It's an unusual choice, but it. I must say, it's 
consistent with the way Donald Trump has responded to the press, in which he's often been very combative, very prickly. Uh, and so he'll have, I think that the two of them uh, will get along well. And if, if she becomes a press secretary, I would imagine she'll have a lot of access to him, which is extremely important to, for the success of the press secretary. Look, a lot of Americans are going to welcome Laura Ingram. A lot of Americans are going to say, whoa, are you really putting Harry in as press secretary? But I think, as Hillary Clinton has said, you've got to give people a chance. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, maybe we should put Jennifer Palmieri in there. You know, maybe we, maybe we should just go back to Hillary's people. Uh, who the heck do you think you're going to put in there? I mean, you've got to put in someone who knows what the heck they're doing and can speak and is knows the people in the press and knows the, you know, I mean, I'm not saying it should be me. I'm just saying, what does he, does he think he should put someone from Hillary's team? This craziness. I kind of like Gergen, though. He's, well, he's worked for like 15 presidents. He, he has like a resume where I've worked for, I mean, like five presidents. He worked for, did he work for Ike? I can't, I can't remember. Um, the, you know, do you think it's disturbing that when I open up my computer screen, the first thing that comes up is six Alinsky rules that explain Obama's words and deeds? <laughs> well, no, I'm going to go. To, I'm going to get into that because we're going to talk about the roots of the protest movement that is now spreading to high schools and middle schools across the country. Uh, as I'm just smiling ear to ear about Jeff Sessions, I'm I'm so happy. He deserves it. He's a great patriot and a, and a kind. And also compassionate. He's just so soft-spoken in many ways. He's he's just so he's such a wonderful person. In in addition to everything else that he is. Um, well, thank you. You're welcome. And Mitt Romney, can't believe these words are coming out of my Mitt Romney is uh, going to be meeting with Trump at Bedminster, which is where Trump National is in New Jersey. And this is going to be tomorrow. Yeah. So they're just going to play some golf and talk about old times and just see where everything is now. I mean, well, I don't think it's fair. Romney wasn't that critical. Now, Donald Trump tells us that he is very, very smart. (laughs) I'm afraid that when it comes to foreign policy, he is very, very not smart. Well, maybe they'll push past all those old comments. Um, what do, what do you think Trump's up to? What do you think he's up to? It's his, it's the Trump walk. It's all these people coming in and out, in and out. It's like the Trump walk. Uh, we'll take a break. 855-40-LAURA. How happy are you about Jeff Sessions? Oh, we have a special guest coming up later on. Well, two. Starts with a D and starts with an S. D and S. I'll tell you later. Don't go away. He's been so spot on. He's so highly respected. Has anybody ever heard of Senator Jeff Sessions? Huh? Jeff, come up. Where's Jeff? Look at him. He's like 20 years old. I talked to Donald yesterday and actually, was it Romney? Romney, what, what are you talking about? I said, he's killed you. He did. I said, Joe, I've been pounding him for five years. This is, this is a tough game, and you've got to be able to take as much as you give. Now, that's a side of Donald Trump that I know a lot of people haven't seen. I think that's why this Romney pick not only surprised so many people, but I think also would comfort a lot of people, again, not only internationally, I don't want but also that. here domestically. That. Let's go to uh, Shelly, line four in Florida. Miss Shelly, go ahead, my friend. Uh, am I on? Yes, honey, go ahead. Okay, yeah, you know, I was going to say it. Really, i got to hand it to Trump because throughout the campaign, everybody talked about, oh, he doesn't have the right temperament to be president, and he kept saying he did, and now I think we're really seeing that because a lot of people could not push aside personal feelings, but this really, to me, proves... Trump is doing what he thinks is best for the country. Bingo, bingo. Let's go to Steve on line two. Steve, go ahead. Well, I got to think, Laura, that Rahm Emanuel just about threw up his breakfast this morning (laughs) when he heard (laughs) Sessions was going to be at DOJ. I live in Chicago, and this place is out of control. I'll let you go. Oh, you're fun. Steve is like right to the point. 
Emmanuel's throwing up his breakfast. That's another appetizing moment on the Laura Ingram show. But and I guess he, Jeff said amnesty. What? Well, I don't think so. The masters of the universe aren't going to get their special treatment. Not any longer. Jeff Sessions, AG. My heart is fluttering. I think it's good that the president-elect is meeting uh, with people like Mr. Romney. He's meeting with a lot of talented people that are going to be uh, just he needs good relationships with. And uh, I think uh, Mr. Romney will be quite capable of, of doing a number of things. But uh, he'll be one of those, I'm sure, that's reviewed. And Mr. That? Trump will make that decision. I have lots of worried and concerned listeners and readers, visitors to Life Set, who are worried about Romney's visit to Trump National on Saturday. They're worried. They think, oh, Trump is going to go back on his pledges because Romney is you know, someone you can't trust because he's stuck a knife in Trump's back and was so critical of him in a, such a personal way. And you can't, you just can't let the fox back into the hen house. So people are very worried. I understand that. Take a breath. Let it out. Don't worry. Nothing's happened yet. Uh, Eldon in Florida, line two, before we get to a Trump advisor. Eldon, go ahead. Hello. Hey, Laura. What a privilege. I just want to talk quickly. Um, I'm a developer. My whole life is negotiations. You cannot care what people say about you. What he's doing is brilliant. He's bringing in his biggest and most visible detractor to put him in a cheerleader position that has no real power. And he's going to be the one who's going to have to say, I was wrong yeah. about Trump. And on top of that, his his success is linked in, in extric- inextricably to Trump's. And then negotiation, you've got to have a good cop. And it works. The good cop, bad cop, it works. We use it all the time because it works. And he, Romney can be his good cop on the foreign policy front, and Trump can be the bad cop. And it is really brilliant. Having, being a developer, I see exactly what he's doing. Well, think about and, this. Think about this, uh, Eldon. All these people who were vicious in their criticism of him. I mean, do we have the, the Mitt Romney really vicious criticisms of, of Trump? I mean, we really have to go back and play them. I mean, he's a narcissist. I mean, all the... I mean, he's not smart. He's a narcissist. He's a megalomaniac, phony, fraud. I mean, it, I mean, we played these sound bites like 15 times. Hello? I mean, everybody on Morning Joe, they were playing these sound bites over and over and over again, over and over and over again. Romney trashing Trump. Romney trashing Trump. I mean, he gave interview after interview trashing Trump. Now, what do you think it looks like for Romney to be then going back to Trump? Does that look bad for Trump or does that look bad for Romney? If I had gone out on a limb going after someone like that, do you think I'd be going with my tail between my legs and going to meet with them? Uh, no. I, that's that's just not who I am. It would be like uh, me going to Jeb Bush's administration. If Jeb Bush became president, go, oh, can I be your friend now? I mean, no, I'd just be myself. Donald Trump is a phony, a fraud. His promises are as worthless as a degree from Trump University. He's playing the members of the American public for suckers. He gets a free ride to the White House, and all we get is a lousy hat. Okay, here, I'm going to put bets on this. How many people think Romney's going to leave Bedminster wearing a Make America Great Again hat? I think it's possible. If I'm Trump, I'm like, hey, Mitt. Okay. (laughs) Mitt, it's great to see you. Here's what you got to do for me. When you're walking out of here, I need you to wear the hat. Uh, well, uh, I, I don't know. I don't look good. Just wear the hat for me. Well, uh, 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 I, I think that's maybe pushing it a little too far. Just put on the hat. Uh, okay. I'm just having fun. I'm just having fun. Okay, it's a Friday. I do voices on Friday. Boris Epstein is <laughs> senior advisor to Donald Trump's transition team. Boris, I could just come over there and do voices for you guys all day. 
Wait, why don't I just that, do that? that was, uh, happy Friday. That was a great voice. That that <laughs> that made you know that made my day. Well, everybody's getting all uh, hot and bothered about Romney, but before we do it, do that. I just want to say, when I heard the news about Sessions, I think the only time I was happier was on election night. But, and I'm still not off that cloud. I'm still so excited about election night. And now I hear the news about Sessions, and it's just I'm going to be skipping around all weekend like I just hit uh, mega, you know, mega millions. That's fantastic yeah, news. Sessions. Unbel- unbelievable news. Uh, you know, he is somebody who has a lifetime of achievement, a lifetime of leadership, someone who is, uh, you know, unbelievably uh, accomplished, somebody who represents the, represented the American people, the people of Alabama, great track record, worked with people across the aisle as well. So, uh, you know, and just represents the responsible leadership that we're going to be seeing from Donald Trump from here and on through his time in the White House. Where do you guys expect the most pushback from the Democrats uh, in the nominations that have been announced so far uh, from Flynn, Sessions, Pompeo? Which which would be the most controversial, do you think? You know, Lauren, you know this, obviously, from your, from your time in government. You prepare to work hard on each nomination and each confirmation, but we're hoping to work very closely uh, with f- folks across the aisle and the, the, give these people the hearings that uh, the court prom hearings they deserve and the confirmations that they deserve, deserve because all three are great Americans, they're strong, and all three represent exactly what Donald Trump has said throughout his campaign, that he'll surround himself with the best and the brightest, and this is a perfect representation of that. The um, the story going back to um, going back to uh, Flynn's time as director of uh, intelligence, uh, he was he was forced out as head of DIA, um, and it's basically for people don't don't know what that is. It's the Pentagon's version of the CIA. So it's this big, de- and, yeah, vast intelligence organization that is mostly focused on giving um, senior senior officials in uh, DOD. Uh, Office of Secretary of Defense and other uh, uniform leaders with the, the intel that they need to make the right decisions. And so he was he was forced out. Um, and, and again, the, the reporting on this, you, you don't even know what to believe. But, you know, you're, he's forced out by the Obama team. And was that because he they, he said he was a hot temper that he you know that he wasn't a team player? I mean, what what was it that why was he forced out? Well, he was a vocal critic of the Iran deal and mm-hmm. while it was being negotiated, and he spoke out against President Obama and the and the wrong solutions and the wrong decisions that were made uh, you know throughout these last eight years. So you, you, he was silenced for being a critic. He was silenced for speaking to power. And that's what, you know, that's part of the notion, part of the message that the Trump movement represents, right? Is speaking truth to power. General Flynn has never been afraid to do that. And that's why, that, that's why he's such a strong, uh, you know, strong pick, such a strong leader and somebody who really, you know, again, represents the best of America, but also who's not afraid to speak his mind and, and speak the truth. He, um, in uh, October, Politico, which has become just a, you know, extension of the dnc politico's piece on him is titled how mike flynn became america's angriest general he was one of the most respected intel officers of his generation now he's donald trump's national security alter ego goading a crowd to lock hillary up what happened question mark so that's the kind of attack they're going to launch against his confirmation i imagine I've had the honor of getting to know General Flynn uh, throughout the campaign and, and his and his family, his son, and I will tell you that he's what he's angry about is where this country is, just like the majority of this country, and we saw that from the victory that we had in November 8th, and congratulations to you, Laura, if I haven't said it yet, and, and to all your listeners and to the voters out there. So we should be angry, right? We should be angry about the Iran deal. We should be angry about the deal with Russia, which allows Russia to increase its nuclear weapons. So, he, of course, he was angry during the campaign, but at those, at those specific issues, and we could go on and on and on at the intelligence failures of this country uh, during the Obama administration, uh, and unfortunately some before as well. But here's what I'll tell you. He is somebody who is a kind person, a generous person, a, a unbelievably deliberative, uh, and somebody who is going to be a great asset 
to this country, no matter what uh, Politico or any other publication other says. You know, you look back on the phenomenal generals who were pushed out uh, by the Obama administration. Stanley McChrystal, of course, who McChrystal, right? Yeah, who was just uh, is such an amazing person on so many levels and a patriot. And he was relieved from his um, post after he did. I guess Rolling Stone published that piece called Runaway General, and they quoted unnamed members of McChrystal's staff criticizing Obama and Biden. And, of course, um, McChrystal was called back to D.C. and relieved of his command. And, and, then, and then, of course, with Flynn, who I think he spoke out because he was really afraid of what was going to befall America. And that's the and, most patriotic thing to do, is it not? And, and, and I think whistleblowers, the big, one of the big stories of this administration is what's happened to whistleblowers. And in a way, they were both, I mean, it's not in the, it, not in the, correct. Yeah, yeah, not in the, you know, the explicit definition of the term, but, you know, he, they were kind of whistleblowers in their own way. Of course. Uh, it, and right, not in the legal definition, but they were speaking truth to power, truth to their bosses, uh, and were both relieved. And if you look at what's happened as a res- as a result, you know, you look at where we are in the Middle East, right? Look, the Middle East is a complete quagmire, a complete disaster, you know, including in Afghanistan. We have problems in Afghanistan. ISIS controlling a lot of Iraq, Syria. Libya is a failed state. And, we're, and you know, President Obama relieved these two generals and other extremely strong people. But you know what? That's the past law. Now we're going to the future. We have Donald Trump as the leader in this country who will utilize the best and the brightest no matter you know where they've been in the in the past in terms of certain comments and whatever it is but he will do it based on their merits and based on what they will offer america and how they'll make america secure again employed again you know in terms of some of the you know the other important positions so uh, you know we're out of that world from uh, over mm-hmm. the last eight years where if you say anything wrong to power you're relieved that's not where we are anymore we, where, we where, are now in the what happens with the, the leadership. With, on the issues where Someone like a Flynn disagrees with Trump, though. He disagreed with Trump on the enhanced interrogations. He's at the very least equivocal about them. He also disagreed with Trump on the ban of Muslims coming into the United States. And Trump since kind of changed his terminology in the way he uh, describes that. Uh, and he also kind of disagreed with calling Putin a, a, a great leader or a strong leader because of what Putin has done to his own people. But how, how does that all get worked out? Well, you know, so... President-elect is somebody, President-elect Trump is somebody who listens to those in the room. He listens to to the voices in the room, listens to his advisors, and he takes the best of what they have to offer and then makes decisions. And no one's ever going to agree on everything, right? Now, you, don't, you wouldn't want sycophants, right? You, you want people who will give their own views because based on their experience, based on their knowledge, and that's exactly what we're going to have here with General Flynn. So uh, it's, it's a positive to, for, mm-hmm. not, for everyone not to always be agreeing. I agree. Because that promotes the deliberate process, right, is as you know, in law, right, and, and, and everything out and there, the, the discussion's key. Boris, before we let you go, we're almost out of time, I'm going way long in the segment. Is, is, is Mitt Romney going to be Secretary of State, and if so, why? I'm not going to speculate about that, Laura. Oh, please, <clears throat> but I think the it's meeting Friday. Is a, you know, the meeting, well, I, I'm, I'm at TGIF, but <laughs> the meeting is a positive, and, here, and here's what I'll say to you listeners, uh, the meeting is a positive because... We are a big tent party, and it shows that what exactly what I was saying earlier. He wanted to kick uh, Trump out of the tent. What do you mean? Big tent? Romney yeah. was pulling the tent poles down and trying to smother Trump with the tent. Like, I, I don't... But you know what? Yeah. Now it's the, president-elect, it's the president-elect's party, and it's his yeah. decisions. And when called on, I, I, you know, it's, it's a positive to have these discussions. So, I, you know, I think that's a good thing. And you know, no matter where it goes... Again, I think it's good to have these conversations between people who have disagreed. And the Donald, you know, President Trump, Donald Trump, is the leader of our party now. He's the leader of our country now. And everybody, everybody should be open to having a discussion with him, either you know, in person or through these airwaves. However it is, yeah. it's good for us as a country to be open to talking to one another because that's uh, how we will is, be great again. I feel like we're just... This is like a Maya Angelou moment with Boris Epstein <laughs> here on the Laura Ingram Show. Can't we all just get along? Uh, Bo- it's, it's Friday. I'm in a good mood. Boris, and we're, and we're still- Boris, you're great. I love having you on. You're so much fun. Thank you so Thank much. You Have a wonderful weekend. Say hey to everybody for me and be good. Give us I all the give us all the juicy details that you know when you know them. All right, Boris, take care. We'll take a break. Close out this hour. A lot more to get to. Do not touch that dial. Ooh. I worked that rally. 
And I was also at the Birmingham, Alabama rally and Show the off. school rally. I worked all of them. And when I went to the rally in Mobile, they had George that was down there and one other person from New York, no security. I think they had a football team manning the gate. And <laughs> I was totally pumped. Amazed. I just stood there with my mouth hung open. It was like a rock pump. It was fun. I, I, you know what? I am so upset that I wasn't at that rally. That's one of my great regrets at this campaign. I was in Canada, I think, for at that week. I'm really upset. Now I'm make, now I'm sad. You, okay, I started off really happy. Now I'm sad and jealous. That's so petty. Uh, Diana, you sound great. Uh, we'll take a break. Be back. Don't go away. Uh, I thought I thought that the Barbara Streisand tour was never ending, and it's the goodbye that just never comes. It's like the going out of business sign that's on the Oriental rug store. Lost our lease. Going out of business, but then it's still there next week. And then the next month, and then the next month after that. And it's just, a, they never go away. Do you think Obama's ever going to go away? I mean, he's in Berlin yesterday with Merkel. Even Merkel seemed like she wanted him to leave at the end of that press conference. She's like, okay, just go. It was a big change, though, right? From when he <clears throat> when he came in and did the big tour of Europe and the crowds and the people were raising their steins of beer to him. And it was all this incredible stuff happening. And it, the future was so bright he had to wear shades. It was an amazing time. Now, eight years later, Europe is being overrun by migrants. Uh, we've had the Brexit vote go through in Britain. We have the rise of populist candidates in France, in Italy, Switzerland. Even Sweden is finding it to be very difficult to assimilate so many people. Finland is deporting tens of thousands of people. Sweden has much stricter rules for immigration and naturalization in place now after uh, Sweden's experience with immigration and migration over the past uh, decade or so, but mostly over the past two or three years. So, so much has happened. The rise of Russia. Of course, the power of Putin. And what was interesting, and we'll play this in a little bit, we were talking about it yesterday, is that Obama was talking about how we need to work with Putin. We need to work with him. But didn't they criticize Trump for saying that we should work more closely with Putin? My hope is that the president-elect coming in uh, uh, takes a similarly constructive approach, finding areas where we can cooperate with Russia, where our, our values and interests align. But that the president-elect also is willing to stand up to Russia where... They are deviating from our values and international norms. Okay, do we need this lecture? I, I find this all very inappropriate. You're on your way out. You never stop talking. Trump is putting his transition team together. He's going to have his own approach to foreign policy. It's going to be different from yours, I hope, because if it's different, it's more likely to be better. And he's still lecturing. He, he really needs to go back to the university setting. Just go be a professor. Go, go be a professor and bandy about these theories about globalization. Globalization is never going away. We, we can't shut the door on globalization. It's particularly important that we oh God, reach out to everybody in, in our countries, uh, those who feel disaffected, those who feel left behind by globalization, uh, and address their concerns in constructive ways as opposed to uh, more destructive ways. Uh, and I think that can be done. Uh, but uh, it, it's hard. It requires creativity. It requires effective communications. Part of what's changed in politics is social media and how people are receiving information. Oh my God. Uh, it's easier to make negative uh, attacks and simplistic slogans than it is to communicate oh. uh, complex policies. Um, but we'll figure it out. Oh. Oh, my. oh my God. That was Merkel, by the way. We took that snoring sound from Merkel. She, there was one point where her head started to do that bobbing thing that you do when you're nodding off on a plane. So her aide had to come to her side to say, you know, She's, she, the aid is coming to the to the side of Obama. Schnell, schnell. 
I mean, th- first of all, he's one of the slowest talkers. If you took out the ums and the ahs, it, he would be a much faster talker. But he is the most meandering on policy or his general ref- reflections on the presidency. Do you think he's ever going to leave? I, I have a feeling t- Sean Hannity said this last night. I think he's right. I don't think Obama's ever going away. He's going to be this, doing nonstop commentary on Trump. And we're just going to have to figure out a way to cover that. That doesn't bore all of you to death, and that just doesn't put you into a, a comatose state. Oh, no, no. We're, oh, no. Okay, one more. Okay, this is it, though. After this, we are not playing another Obama soundbite. I, I, I'm serious about this. I'm not just joking. You cannot play another one after this. Based on current surveys of public opinion in the United States, uh, <laughs> it turns out that the majority of Americans think I've done a pretty good job. So uh, that we haven't, in fact, gone too fast, uh, as you describe it. But what is certainly true is that the American people, <laughs> just like the German people, just like the British and people around the world, are seeing extraordinarily rapid change. The world is shrinking. Economies have become much My more integrated. Demographics are shifting. Oh, no. Okay. It, they like me. They really like me. I'm a, I'm, I'm a likable person. I'm popular. It's, if you're popular, you don't have to say you're popular. The popular kids don't go around saying, hey, I'm popular. They're, they are popular in part because they don't go around saying they're popular. No, no, this is... I can't do this. No more, no more, no more, no more, no more. I'm just happy about Jeff Sessions being attorney general. I, and by the way, um, Pompeo as CIA director... Here, uh, I'm going to read you a little bit about him. And it, it, you might not know him. He's from Kansas, 4th District of Kansas. Um, he's, he was phenomenal. We'll play some of the interactions he had with Hillary during the Benghazi hearings. But he's on the House Select Intelligence Committee, Select Benghazi Committee, first in his class at West Point, 1986 grad of West Point, Harvard Law grad. Um, he, uh, yeah, he graduated. He was in the uh, cavalry. He was a cavalry officer patrolling the Iron Curtain before the fall of the Berlin Wall. He also served with the 2nd Squadron, 7th Cav in the 4th Infantry Division. Um, he's a total stud, let's just face it. Uh, he, yeah, he, was, he, he was the editor of the Harvard Law Review and moved to Kansas and founded Thayer Aerospace, where he served as CEO for more than a decade, providing components for commercial and military aircraft. My gosh, he has military experience, business experience, intelligence experience i mean my goodness and of course the benghazi committee well there was one moment where he was to put it bluntly infuriated that no one had been fired post benghazi you talked about being disappointed too i've heard you use that several times you were disappointed you read the arb why don't you fire someone the Accountability Review Board pointed out several people working in the State Department who they thought had not uh, uh, carried out their responsibilities adequately, but they said that they could not find uh, a breach of duty. And the personnel rules and the laws that govern those decisions were followed very carefully. I'm not asking what the ARB did. I'm asking what you did. I followed the law, Congressman. That, was my, that was my responsibility. Madam Secretary, you're telling me that you had no authority to uh, take anyone's paycheck, to cause anyone to be fired. You're telling me you were legally prohibited from doing that. Is that your position here this morning? It is my position that in the absence of finding dereliction or breach of duty, uh, there could not be immediate uh, action taken. He was, he was tough on that committee. It was good. He wasn't intimidated at all by Mrs. Clinton. Uh, so I think it's a great choice. I think all three men are going to do you know, their best for the country. And this is like a breath of fresh air coming back into Washington. You get the sense. People just seem happier around Washington to me. Housing prices are going to go up more because all these new people are going to be moving into town. Clear out the underbrush. Let's go to Jane in Florida on line one. I know a lot of you have been waiting online. I'm going to try to get to all your calls. Ooh, Well, I'll, everyone try to be a little bit brief if you can. Go ahead, Jane. Laura, I'm thrilled about Jeff Sessions. I think he's awesome. And the only thing that would make me even happier would be to have you be named as the press secretary. Now, why do you think I'd be good at that, Jane? 
Because you are a, a speak as you say it. You you represent the people, the people that elected Donald Trump, and you are fast on your feet, girl. Oh, that's a that's very nice. Do you think I'd be nice enough to the reporters, or do I, do I, maybe I should just bake them cookies if I did it every day and just warm cookies every day for them, just to treat them right? I'm just I have no idea what's going to happen on that, but I'm just having fun. Thank you, Jane. I appreciate it, Spencer. Let's go to Spencer in Texas Hi, online, Laura. too. Thank you, Laura. But why Why would you ruin a perfectly good Friday morning by playing all those sound bites from Beelzebub in the White House? Oh, my gosh. It is a never-ending <laughs> lecture. Apology tour. Now, now he should do an apology tour for his administration for the last eight years. Go ahead. Right. Right. Okay, uh, real quick question. I, I love Sessions, and I think I heard another senator being uh, considered in the cabinet. I'm Cruz. worried about the balance of power in the Senate. Right, but sen- but remember, the appointment uh, in Alabama, and I don't know exactly what the mechanism is for doing so, but I believe, how does that work? He can appoint. He can appoint. Yeah. Sessions gets to pick? Sure. Let me check. Well, I don't, I'm not sure that's the way it goes, but I, I'm pretty sure a Republican replaces him. Yes. And it will be, and, and my vote for that would be Gary Palmer. Um, Mo Brooks, I think, wants it. He's another congressman from Alabama. Gary Palmer's been around now for, gosh, three or four years, three years. Um, but he's brilliant. Um, also played for Bear Bryant. So that's my real reason for wanting Gary in there. But yeah, it's a, that, that's a good thought, and I'm glad you're thinking about that. But I wouldn't worry. I think it's, uh, I think it's good. Uh, let's go to Tracy on line three. Trace, welcome. Hi, Laura. I just want to say I do hope that you uh, get that position. I think you would be great at that. I saw you in the month debate on C-SPAN. It was awesome. Thank you. For Jeff Sessions, I want to say well tied. And as far as uh, Mitt Romney goes, uh, my hair is on fire. I don't feel he has any right to rear his head right now. I am a volunteer in Destin, Florida for the Trump campaign, and I went door to door. I registered voters. We worked our tail off for Trump. And the whole time we were doing that, we've got this powerful person, Romney, working against our candidate. It was heartbreaking. It so might be genius, now, though. Let's listen to this theory. It might be just pure genius and uh, strategy that Trump is employing and bringing in all these former critics. It makes him look much bigger than even he already is as president, uh, president-elect. But doesn't that make Trump look – makes him look really – magnanimous and open-minded and larger than petty grievances. You see how diplomatic I've become? <laughs> so it, it's much tougher for Romney to make that walk to Trump than Trump to welcome Romney at the, the golf course. But don't, wouldn't it be worth it, Tracy, if Romney had, if he said, okay, Mitt, I'll, I'll, I'm at love, love, love the idea of meeting with you, but, um, you know, love the idea with meeting with you, but, 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 but we have to get you to wear the Make America Great Again hat. You know, the slogan that Obama was ridiculing when he was over there in Europe. The slogans are so easy. What about hope and change? Was that not a slogan? I mean, he used the slogan, hope and change, a stupid poster with hope on it. What did that get us? Um... Let's go to Brian in Nebraska on line two. You guys are giving me advice about a job I'm not uh, I'm not I'm not prepared to talk about. But go ahead, Brian, just for fun on a Friday. Go ahead. Brian, Hello? Brian. Hello. Hey, go ahead. Hello. Can you hear me? I got gotcha, you, buddy. Yeah. Um, if you uh, make the press secretary job, I think all those easy questions that the reporters used to ask, you got to get a list of those, and then when they ask. A question say, no, you can only ask the easy questions. You didn't want to ask tough questions of the Obama administration. You only get asked the easy ones like you did before. If, if you could be a twee, kind what kind of, of yeah, if you could be a twee, what kind of twee would you be? Remember the Barbara Walters questions? What, what makes you cry? Well, I'd, I'd be in, instantly endearing uh, to the press start pulling those deals, but that is funny. All right, we'll take a break. 855 laura uh, Obama's never-ending lecture tour. And Kim Strassel writes that the Democrats, far from learning any lesson from defeat, 
are merely doubling down. And Saul Alinsky's fingerprints are all over these protests nationwide. I'll tell you how I know that when we come back. And I like I like Willie. Yeah, guy is a lot. He's a nice guy. But I mean, my goodness, who cares what any of them think? I think there might be other reasons for Trump to bring in Romney that are brilliant, frankly. But I don't know what he's going to do. I have no idea. But I think the fact that he has everyone jawboning about this and speculating, it's just this is vintage Trump. He's playing this. I think he's playing it really well. Uh, we don't have time for the calls. What are we going to do? OK, well, we'll OK, we'll get to the callers. I promise. Uh, we're also going to talk to my uh, friends at Food for the Poor later on. And we got a, sp- well, we have a special duo coming up. Special duo whose YouTube appearances during this campaign really just made me howl. Howl. Diamond and Silk up next. Diamond and Silk celebrating the Trump victory. We're going to be playing other Diamond and Silk interludes during this segment. Because they are on with us right now, and they became a fixture and a powerful social media uh, voice for Donald Trump over the last year plus. Uh, they were surrogates who got to know Donald Trump, and I think some people just thought it was all funny. And it was all tee-hee, giggle, giggle, but humor is part of it. Humor and passion to sell the message of, of populism and economic renewal and Diamond and Silk, they're biological sisters from uh, North Carolina. Not just sisters in the sister sense, but sisters. Lynette Hardaway, Rochelle Richardson, uh, and I didn't know their names until just now, and they join us now. Hey, girls, how are you? Good to talk to you. Hey, Laura, good to talk to you. I hope you're doing well. (laughs) It was fun to run into you at uh, at the Hilton. That got a little... That got a little nerve-wracking that night, didn't it? We we didn't quite know what was going to happen until almost the clock struck midnight. Absolutely, Mm -hmm. because they didn't want to call it. But we knew, baby, he had won Pennsylvania. He had won this thing hands down. Uh, we, We called it from the beginning. We knew he was going to be the president. We never wavered. We never backed down. We never stumbled. And bam, he's the 45th president, Donald J. Trump. We love it. Did you uh, did you have a chance to talk to him afterward, or have you talked to him since? We well, when we were on the stage with him, mm-hmm. so when we, everybody walked down and did a little rope line, we went right out with him. So we had our little intimate moment with him, shook his hand and everything, and saw him off Aww. in his little uh, entourage yeah. and got in. He got on in his car in his truck or whatever that was he mm-hmm. was driving. Did you they were um, driving him I, in? Do yeah. I, now tell us about how you all got involved from the beginning. I think most people. Remember your video about Megyn Kelly that you did after that dust up with uh, Trump and Kelly, uh, and that and that <laughs> and that got a lot of attention at the time. But then, uh, how, where did you guys come from? Like, how, how did you become this? Well, what happened was, okay, we had the viewers view a uh, YouTube channel, yeah, and we started talking about a little bit about media bias stuff that we didn't like, and then along came Donald Trump announcing that he was running for president. And I called Silk. I said, Silk, I said, cut on your TV. Donald Trump is announcing that he's running for president. And I turned on my TV. And then she called me back halfway through. She said, girl, she said, this is going to be the next president of the United States. And we started talking about Donald Trump when we saw how the media started taking his words out of context and started throwing him under the bus. We finally found someone that we really liked. We didn't care about him being a Republican. We liked him. We liked the fact that he wanted to secure the border and wanted to renegotiate these trade deals to bring back our jobs. And wanted to bring back spirit. We loved it. Mm-hmm. But the media, they had a problem with it. So up pop Diamond and Silk. <laughs> <laughs> now, now Diamond is the one. Diamond, see, a lot of people, they just put you together as one person, Diamond and Silk. But Diamond, mm-hmm. you, you're the one who talks more, correct? I do talk a lot. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm going to be quiet. Because, honey, I will, when it comes to my man Donald J. Trump, I can talk all day about him. And Sil- <laughs> Silk, the funny, the, the, okay, this is why I love Silk, is because Silk, Silk is like the peanut gallery. She, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know it. Yeah, you got that right. That's right. Uh, t- that's like church. I talk with my look. That's right. I, I talk with my looks and with my facial expression. Uh, that's Silk right. is like the amen corner for mm-hmm. me. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. she goes, mm-hmm. <laughs> she folds her arms, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's like you're at church, though. This is, yeah, this is church when you're, uh, when you're watching mm-hmm. the, the viewer's view. So now how will, how will the viewer's view YouTube channel change now that Trump is, is going to be inaugurated on January 20th. You, do you, will you still continue the commentaries against his critics? Well, yes, we, have to, we, will, 
We have to because now he's going to be pushing his agenda, and people need to be educated on his agenda. Mm-hmm. So we have to keep it going. We just can't go out of the out of the limelight. We just can't just stop. And then our fans are like, "Wait a minute, we need y'all. We mm-hmm. need y'all because you all helped us get a, get through some hard times." That's right. We did a lot of grassroots work. We were out. We traveled the country, mm-hmm. stopping for Donald J. Trump and talking to people and pushing people to go to the polls, get to the polls, vote for him, vote for him. And so we, we still have to be those people voices. We have to. We have we, to be and we realize that the more we educate, we can all elevate, then we can make this country great. So it's going to take education. No, there's That's a rhyming right. deal going on there. I love that. <laughs> hey, 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 Silk, I have a question. When, you, when, you're, when you're out stumping for Trump, when you're out stumping for Trump, did you get – any type of hostile reaction from African Americans, black Americans who think it's ridiculous that black people would ever support Trump? To tell you the truth, no, we did we did not. We got a lot of thank you, you know, because a lot of people we we basically gave a lot of people permission to be able to voice their opinion. Um, so when we were out stumping for Trump, no, we didn't get a lot of uh, backlash. People was really happy to see us, to see us out. They was excited. There was a lot of picture taken, hugs and kisses. So they, I believe, they absolutely um, loved the notion that we gave them an okay to voice their opinion without getting criticized and, and ostracized. What would you advise uh, President-elect Trump about continuing outreach to black America and other minorities who wouldn't traditionally perhaps support him or listen to him? How important is it for him to continue that outreach? It's very important for very. him to continue that. That's why he's going to have diamond and silk. That's, that's right. what that's what our voices is going to be used for. Mm-hmm. Outreach, black America, Hispanics, all Americans. All Americans. We want to fix this thing up where another Democrat would ever get in that White House again. Never. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we can do that. Yeah. I really do. I believe it's a movement. I believe people are joining the movement. Mm-hmm. And I believe more black people are going to jump on the band- bandwagon. You know what? I'm going to tell you why. I believe he would have had way. I believe he would have had about 90% of the support had it not been for our president and the, the left-wing media calling Donald Trump out of his name, calling him that racist word. Mm-hmm. That scares a lot of black people. Mm-hmm. But give Donald Trump a chance. Let him show you what he's all about. And once he starts fixing these inner and urban cities, That's you're going right. to see these people jumping on board. Wait a minute. Now, how, do you, how, do, you right guys, how do you guys uh, make a living from the YouTube, YouTube channel? Or you, what, what do you do to make a living and pay all your expenses? We are video vloggers. We are mm-hmm. video vloggers. So what we do is we vlog videos. We do make money off of our videos, mm-hmm. <clears throat> off our YouTube channel, and it all sustains us. And we up. also have the Diamond and Silk store. So you can go to the diamondandsilkstore.com and pick out a T-shirt there. We have our Women United for Trump T-shirts mm-hmm. and our Men United for Trump hats. So that's how we do it. Very yep. cool. Very cool. But that's you guys don't. Do. You guys live in the same town, or you guys? Separate we or? stay in the same town. Yes, we do. We stay down the street from each other. She mm-hmm. has her house. I have my house. That's right. <laughs> now, do you have any other siblings, or is it just the two of you? We do have more yeah, siblings. More siblings. Mm-hmm, we truly do. What do they say about this? Are they? I have siblings well, who know, can't stand Trump. For Donald, thank God they voted for Donald J. Trump. Our parents voted for Donald J. Trump. Wow. Our parents love Donald J. Trump. Mm-hmm. Yes, because it was t- it, Look, we had to educate people. That's right. We can no longer vote for the same system that keeps handing us crumbs. The Democrats wanted to have cr- hand you crumbs. When you heard Hillary Clinton say, I'm going to follow uh, uh, Obama's legacy, or then that means you're, gonna, you're about to get a, a bad deal here. That's right. Because his legacy has been rioting in the streets, people burning down their communities, people shooting each other. Uh, that's what his legacy has been like. I don't want no more of that. That's I'm right. ready to see spirit. And what keep a- in mind that our parents were lifelong Democrats, Ooh. and they switched to Republican just to vote for Donald mm-hmm. Trump. That's right. Wow. Okay. That's very mm-hmm. interesting. And, and what what is mm-hmm. your faith background? Our faith, well, we do go to, ch- well, we're Christians. We believe in God. Uh-huh, yes, we do believe in God. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know if I wanted to. I'm going to say, I used to tie something to it, but I'm going to say non-denomination. Non-denomination. I'm going to say non-denominational. Um, because sometimes you can get tied to these uh, organizations and these groups, and I'm, I'm like, okay, so wait a minute, what are you telling your people? Mm-hmm. Because sometimes I get appalled when I see preachers stand up and tell the members, 
you need to vote for a system that keeps handing you crumbs. It's mm-hmm. time to educate people. I'm tired of people living beneath their means. It's time for people to start coming up a little bit and, yeah. and, and not always, you know, down handing crumbs. Oh, I got to have this Obama phone. Mm-hmm. Give people a good job; they can buy their own phone. What about um, and, and with God, there is no limitation. Well, so that's we don't true. believe in limitation. That's with, why we believe in God. With uh, with God, all things are possible. And that's right. And, and what what about the Black Lives Matter presence in these protests that are going on across the United States? You have a lot of young people protesting, a lot of illegal immigrants in these groups protesting, walking out of school, blocking streets. Uh, Mm. It's Saul Alinsky 101, but what what do you make of the Black Lives Matter movement? Yeah, I think it's sad. I think the Black Lives Matter movement is a mess. Mm -hmm. It's a mess. And I'm going to tell you, now that Donald Trump is president, we we would not be seeing a whole bunch of that foolishness right there. Uh Uh-uh. No. You think it's going to stop? I think it's going to get worse, Diamond. I think it's going to get worse. Well, I think we have to educate people. And these people, these illegal people, people that's in our country raising the Mexican flag while burning the American flag, that kind of stuff cannot be tolerated. Because you know what we're teaching people? They can disrespect our country. They can disrespect our flag. Why don't we call ICE and start locking up some of these people? That's right. That's <laughs> Maybe, right. Um, have, you, have you put in your names for Secretary and Undersecretary <laughs> of Homeland Security? That would, that would be a possibility for you. Or maybe you, it's, may, it's like <laughs> maybe you guys could do like this here. yeah you guys could do social media for the White House you know you could have your you could have your videos on the White House website and really spice things up that would be fun ooh that'd be fun I didn't even think about that that'd be really fun yeah I think you that'd should that'd be fun yeah think about that because they need they need an unconventional approach to social media and because you had so much success with the Diamond and Silk. Uh, you know, a uh, YouTube channel, the viewers view, then uh, think, think of what you could do with all those resources at the White House. I mean, I think that's a, an interesting idea, and I would pursue that, guys. It really is an interesting idea. I never thought of it like that. It would be phenomenal. <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll support you for Homeland Security as well. I, think, I have a feeling, oh my I have, you guys, I have a feeling no one would be crossing the border if you two were on horseback riding that thing as much as necessary. That's it's, right. I'd be like, we're going the other way. Uh-uh. Right. You, come in, you want to come in legally, you not got, illegally. You got that right. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play silk. Yes. You got that. Mm-hmm. You got that right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do you guys That's like right. the Do you guys like the Medea movies? I, I, Raymond Arroyo, who who pops in every now and then. Oh my God, I scream laughing, and I have not gone to Medea's Halloween. Was it the Medea Halloween movie? I haven't gone to or Medea's Thanksgiving. Do you ever watch the, the Tyler Perry movies? We do watch we Tyler Perry. As a matter of fact, we love Tyler Perry, even yeah. though he would he voted the other way. He's a liberal. Love him. Yeah, oh no, no. Him. But but I'm sorry, Medea is. I I want to do Medea goes to the Trump White House, and I want Medea. <laughs> Yeah, that would be funny. Yeah, and I want Medea to like ha- get, yeah, get hit Donald Trump with his purse and stuff. Like, do all that. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> oh my God! Well, <laughs> oh, uh-uh, because Di- Diamond and Silk gonna have to handle Medea. Mm, that's oh right. no! Can't be hitting yeah. our president. Yeah, Diamond that's and right. Silk. No, Medea meets Diamond and Silk at the Trump White House. Okay, I've just renamed the movie. Oh, that that's would be funny. One. That okay. would be really funny. Well, you guys, it was great meeting you at the uh, Trump victory party, and we've enjoyed your commentary throughout the uh, entire election season. We're gonna continue to watch. Will you come back? soon oh absolutely oh, definitely yeah and thank you for having me. Uh, god bless and remember have a great thanksgiving and uh, we'll check back with you diamond and silk on the laura ingram show boy let's go to Vito in florida line five Vito. hey laura love you back at you after listening to diamond i i after listening to diamond sick i had to call you and tell you this i can't get over how excited people are around me that trump won I'm at my barber shop. My barber is just, he's just, how wonderful America's going to get our dignity back. They're not talking about free stuff. We're talking about America being Working. great again. Jobs, jobs coming back to America. Patriotism. There was a lady there had two, there was a lady there with two little boys and she was talking about how excited she was that her kids, the schools might be better and they might, mm-hmm. you know, uh, be able to go to college and, and, uh, you know, and be a part of a, a great America. But it's amazing, all the people around me, how excited. It's almost a reincarnation of Reagan. Reagan. Anyway. Reagan. 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 Are you talking Reagan. about Don Reagan, Reagan, the old Treasury Secretary? I love it. Vito's excited. Vito, you're going to go off tonight and have a big old 
plate of pasta and red sauce and right Vito I know you make good sauce I can tell by listening to you right you make great sauce yes yes he does absolutely okay good I'm coming out and hanging to hanging with you all right you're listening to the Laura Ingram show we'll get to all your calls Mitt Romney is secretary of state or is this just more brilliant strategy 